Hello to all my dear students. This is Dr. Ruchi Rai. Let's discuss a clinical vignette in ophthalmology. A 40 years old patient presents in the OPD with diminution of vision and diplopia after trauma to his right eye. So he has a trauma to his right eye and he is complaining of diminution of vision and diplopia. When he, on examination, the ocular alignment and ocular movements are, were normal. Slit lamp examination in oblique illumination showed a golden crescent. Fundus examination shows normal optic disc and edema at the macula. Conioscopy findings were normal. The patient is a diabetic since 7 years. What is the cause of his symptoms? Is it macular edema? Is it cataract? Subluxation of lens or fourth nerve palsy? So whenever you, whenever you are going to get a question like this, so so many things and so many information at one point of, at the same time, then we have to particularly look at our catch points, which are what are the important points which will help me towards the diagnosis. So first important point here is diplopia. Okay. So he is a patient who is has a history of trauma that becomes the second important history point here third normal ocular alignment and ocular movements fourth important point slit lamp examination is showing you golden crescent i'll sh shortly tell you what is the golden crescent what they mean by so these are the four important points that I have highlighted on this question. So these are the four points which will help me towards diagnosis. Okay, let's also not forget that there is a macular edema in fundus examination. He is a diabetic. And what is gonioscopy? I hope you all know. This is by microscopic examination of the angle of the eye. So that is normal. Let's take one by one. Take the options here. First is macular edema. Of course, macular edema is present in this patient. It's given very, very clearly. But what is important to understand, it cannot be a cause of diplopia. You know? So my question here is, what is the cause of his symptoms? I cannot answer this one then. Second is cataract. Okay, does cataract present as diplopia? Think all of you. Yes, an intubescent cataract or uh, uh, what do you say? Incipient cataract, okay. So, intubescent and incipient cataract can present as polyopias and this is will come under uniocular diplopia. So, yes, cataract does present as diplopia sometimes. Yes, it can be related to trauma, correct. But what about golden crescent? That doesn't fit here. So, I won't be, uh, I wouldn't like to answer cataract either. Coming to subluxation of lens, okay, before I come to this point, I think this is the fourth option is absolutely clear. Fourth nerve palsy cannot be an option because ocular alignment and movements were normal. So if it's a fourth nerve palsy, patient should be presenting with your superior oblique palsy will cause hypertropia and other features of SO palsy. We will try to discuss that in future. So all of you, we come back to subluxation of lens. Does it fit? Yes. Any subluxation is again a cause of uniocular diplopia, number one. And of course, it, the most common cause of subluxation is your, uh, yes, the most common cause of subluxation is trauma. Okay. And what about what is golden crescent? Golden crescent is nothing but, let's look at it all of you. Okay, before I come to this slide, we look at this one. So this whole thing here, this fundus glow which you see due to the subluxation of the lens here, it's a cataractus lens, right? So this is called golden crescent. So again, it's a finding of subluxation of lens. So you can see that fundus glow from the phacic part of the pupil and the, this becomes the phacic part, this becomes the aphacic part. Right, all of you? This is what we meant by golden crescent. I think it's clear. Okay. Once we know this, so all this, I think it's clear here from here to here, right? Once uh, we know this, we, we were, let's discuss the previous slide, what I have written for you all here. 
quickly we will revise what were the causes of unioccular diplopia means diplopia through one eye or binocular that is both eye so in unioccular diplopia of course i mentioned in cpn and in tumors and cataract subluxation of lens and polychoria what is polychoria all of you this is polychoria is nothing but multiple pupil chorea means pupil poly means multiple okay then then coming to binocular diplopia yes most common cause is paralytic squint okay so if they ask you the most common one this becomes paralytic squint right and then restrictive causes like thyroid of thyropathy and blowout fractures so this was like quickly revising the causes of diplopia here okay once we know this and this is the subluxation of the eyes so i think this is clear before i go to the next slide and show you something more so this patient the our answer would have become subluxation of lens right okay look at this one then what are the most common cause of subluxation of course it is trauma okay i just told you it is trauma but other causes you know this is very very important what are the syndromes related to ectopia lentis you know any congenital subluxation is ectopia lentis so when you look at these syndromes it is marfan's homocystinuria veer marchesani and heller danlos or a few this is not enough next thing that they will ask you is in each syndrome what is the direction of subluxation So this is my very old method of making you all learn. Make an M of Marfan's, all of you. Once you make an M of Marfan's, over the head of the M, we put an arrow here. So now, what is the direction, all of you? It is superior temporal. For Marfan's, this becomes superior temporal. little struggle with the pen so just just you can note down it is superior temporal then we talk about is what about your on the same diagram on the same diagram all of you make a dotted line here and here and make the arrow like this so just opposite direction that is inferior nasal is right here h so it's very simple to learn now for homocystinuria it is just the opposite inferior nasal and for marfan's it is superior temporal okay i don't like my diagram much but i think the information is clear right okay veer marchesani we will learn it is just downwards for veer marchesani it is downwards eller danlos no direction is mentioned so we don't need to learn it that was few there were few points about subluxation which are important and you should know it nicely okay then after this we talk about let us look at what can be the other features of blunt trauma so it's a blunt trauma what are the other features this is what you are looking here is rosette shaped cataract so all of you do you understand this that this whole thing this is showing you the corneal section from here to here right so this is your corneal section let me change the color so from here to here this is showing you and ignore this this circular line this is just a reflection so this whole is your corneal section and then when it falls on the lens here what you see this is your rosette shaped cataract i think it's clear so if this is the corneal section and you are showing the light from this direction right so this becomes your epithelium this whole thing in between is your stroma of the cornea and the inner lining here this becomes the endothelium so you should know and learn how to see this uh, how to infer the slit of the cornea also okay right we come to the next feature is we just said this patient has edema so after the trauma blunt trauma it is we generally presume it's a blunt trauma otherwise we would always mention a perforating injury here with all the features are referring to blunt 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 trauma so in this blunt trauma what you see is edema and the macula 
right? So this edema at the macula in this slide, this is what is called Berlin's edema or commotio retini. So in MBBS, you get a lot of questions and short notes on commotio retini. So if you see, it looks like a red spot at the macula. Okay, I'll just put an arrow to show you. This is what we call cherry red spot. So it looks like morphological description here is it is a cherry red spot. Okay. So what can be the other causes of cherry red spot? It's a big topic. We'll discuss it more when we talk about retina. But yes, quickly, let's go through it. It can be Berlin's edema and blunt trauma. Cherry red spot can occur in central retinal artery occlusions. And it can be depositions like ganglocidosis and sphingolipidosis like Tay-Sachs, neiman pig Gauchers and so on. Okay, all of you, I have a question there to put. You all can answer me and post me also. Why do you see a cherry red spot in Berlin's edema or in central retinal artery occlusion or in depositions let's think about it this is you can answer me later okay another feature let's not miss this one is also a very important short notes for you mbbs people and otherwise also we should know what is happening blunt trauma the impact on your eye iris just touches the lens and comes back and the back surface of this iris has pigment layer now this pigment is getting deposited on the anterior capsule of the lens this is what is Vosius ring. So with the arrow I just showed you this imprint of iris pigment. This is what is Vosius ring. Right? Yeah, it's already written. Sorry. So this is your Vosius ring. I hope it's clear now. So what are the features of blunt trauma? Uh, you should it should be all on your tips. Apart from subluxation of lenses, okay, but you should know about Vosius ring, very important topic. Berlin's edema, rosette-shaped cataract. Right, guys? Okay. So, what are the what is the question I have put? And you have to answer this question. What did I ask you all here? Is why, what is the cause of cherry red spot seen morphologically in all these causes that I have just mentioned? Should I give you one more question to think about? And I can answer in my next video. Okay, so let's think about this uh, pigment which is on the anterior capsule of the lens and it is in form of a ring, is Bosius ring. What if it is all scattered on the lens? If it is a rough scattering on the lens, what does that indicate? I'll just draw it for you. If suppose I see, um, if this is the lens I'm seeing through, through the dilated pupil, this time, I'm saying the pigments are all like this. What do we call this? Right? What do you label this? If the pigments are not in, a, uh, in the shape of the pupil, it's not in a ring form, but it is all scattered on the lens. So the, these are the two questions you have to think about and answer me. You can answer me on the class. Okay, and we can talk about it in the, my next presentation. Is it okay, all of you? So that was about this clinical question. So this is the way we, and it's always, always, always look at the catch points. Never get panicked with one paragraph of the question and what should I do? What is the solution and what is the diagnosis? They will always have some catch point. Okay. Thank you. All the best. And all of you stay blessed. And very important advice, keep smiling, be happy, be positive.